Hi YouTube and welcome to the fifth episode of Operating System Development Series provided by the iNode channel. If you have not watched the previous episodes yet, you can find the links in the description section below. So let's get started. So today I'm going to walk you through a better practice in the world of building your operating system and C or C++ programs in general. As you can see here, we've got our regular operating system that we have built in the previous episodes, but with a few upgrades. If you go inside the include folder here, we can see that we have almost for every source file two versions with the same name but with um, a .c extension which contains the function body, the function definitions, while the other has a .h extension which is a header file that contains all the function headers and macros as well as dependencies. So, um, unlike the types.h file which has no functions so there is no types.c here. But if we take a look for example at system.h here and system.c you can see that inside the system.h for every function we do not have the body of the function there is no implementation there is no definition for the function all we have here is the function name the return type of the function and the function parameter type and parameter numbers of course but there is no definition. We also find here inside the system.h file the dependencies of this um, file. So this file, since it is using the inside integer of 8-bit, it depends on the types.h which we defined in the include folder. But, but where does the definition go? If we take a look at the system.c file, you can see that these functions that are declared here are defined inside the system.c. So we've got the same header but with the body part and since the this file depends on the system.h file and the system.h file depends on the types.h file we can use these return types inside our c file. The same thing goes for for all the other files. So here we've got string.h and string.c. So string.h has the, um, the function headers and the string.c has the actual definition of the functions. The same thing goes for screen.h and screen.c. So if we take a look at both of them. We can see here the function. Um, these, these are the uh, variable declaration here, but the variable initialization goes inside the screen.c, so you can see we're initializing cursor x and cursor y and screen width and screen heights and screen depth, etc. And here we are declaring the um, fu uh, function names, here's the functions, and the actual definitions goes inside the screen.c. <coughs> the same thing goes for the keyboard.h. So, as we've said before, we have only one function. So, we declare the function here and define it inside the keyb.c. And of course, these two files are going to be co uh, combined together later. So, the uh, the next thing we added in our project here, you can see a new folder called object. This object actually is going to contain um, the compiled versions of these headers here. So we're going to get more than uh, two objects. In the previous episodes we had only the entry point of the kernel and the main kernel. But now we also have the extra files. <coughs> 
The next thing we need to upgrade in our operating system is the build.sh file. So if we go inside it, as you can see here, we have extra lines of compilation codes here and this link in line got longer. So instead of compiling the main kernel into a kernel object, now we also compile the system.c source code which, uh, which is inside the include folder and after compiling it the output file is going to be called system.o inside the folder object that we have created. The same thing goes for the string file which is inside the include, it goes under the object um, folder under the name of string.o. <coughs> the same thing for screen.c, it becomes screen.o and kb.c it becomes kb.o. And of course we have to um, change the link line here. So we are making the kernel.bin file uh, with the entry point of our kernel, the main kernel, and the object files that we built with these lines. So here are system.o, string.o, screen.o, and kb.o. And of course we are testing our kernel after uh, linking it with the Cameo executable. So if I delete these files here, I'm gonna delete them, move them to trash and recompile again. And run the terminal. And as you can see, the files has been created there. And the operating system is working just fine. So uh, the so whenever we make any change, the entire operating system gets compiled from the very beginning bit to the very last bit. So the point here is to divide the operating system into multiple parts so that each one gets compiled individually. And of course, we're doing static linking, so we need to relink after making any change. So if, for example, I want to make a change inside the kernel.c file here, so instead of welcome to NIDA's operating system, I want it to be hi and welcome. So if I want to recompile again, I do not need to recompile everything. In fact, I can disable this line of code, this one, this one, this one, and this one, and I only need to compile that file and then relink again. So for example, if the, the operating system gets larger and bigger, like Linux operating system, uh, if I want to change this, to make that change, if, I, if the system is not divided into um, C codes like this, that would take hours just for making a bit of change. So I might, I'm gonna compile again, so save, and if I run a terminal, as you can see, hi and welcome. So we've been able to successfully make a change to the operating system without even compiling everything from scratch again. <coughs> this also makes it easier for us and other developers to be able to understand the different parts of our software. This technique is also called the encapsulation mythology. We build parts and then we forget them. The only thing we need to remember is how to call them and not how they actually work. And believe me, you will now you will know the importance of encapsulation as your OS gets larger and more complicated. So I suggest you follow this technique from the beginning before before things get gets messy. So thank you guys for watching. See you in the next uh, episode. Uh, until then, have a nice day.